You guys aren't gonna believe this. Once again, I am here in front of the camera to talk about my poison dart frogs that I have just become very obsessed with. I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna hide it. I have really become obsessed with my poison dart frogs. They're just so cool. They're so fun to own. How could I not become obsessed? This video is kind of about my poison dart frogs, but I guess not really. While my frogs are certainly going to be in this video, they are not the stars of today's video. The star of today's video is actually going to be my dart frog enclosure and all of the plants that live inside of it. You know, my frogs are awesome, but today we're talking about the plants. So the reason why I wanted to come on here and talk to you about my dark frog enclosure and all the plants in it is because, oh my goodness, the plants are doing so well. This enclosure is just doing phenomenal and I I really could not be happier. I'm, I'm so excited about it. My frogs are doing fantastic. The plants are doing fantastic. That makes me happy. So I have now had my dark frog enclosure set up for for about four to five months. I don't remember exactly when I set it up, so it's it's somewhere in that time range. Either way, the enclosure has not been set up for that long in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, it has had lots of time to grow in and establish, but it's not a very old terrarium by any means. It's, it's only a few months old. But even though it has only been a few months, the plant growth in my enclosure has been so good that I just, I need to show it off. I need to talk about it. So that's what we're going to do today. So as I'm sure many of you know by now, a few months ago I partnered with Exoterra to make this dart frog enclosure build possible. I'm using almost exclusively Exoterra products in this enclosure here. Exoterra sent me the enclosure, they sent me the plant lights, they sent me a misting system, they sent me substrates, and a bunch of other products to make this build possible. So now that it has been a few months that my dart frog tank has been set up, and it has just done so well in that time. A couple days ago, I contacted Jesse at Exoterra and I said something along the lines of, hey, I've had my dart frog tank set up for a few months now and everything has been going really, really well and the plants are growing really, really well. And I can attribute the good plant growth to products such as the lights that I use and the substrates that I use. So I really wanna do a video showing off the success that I've had with this enclosure. Would you guys be interested in working with me on this? And they said yes, and here we are. So today's video is sponsored by Exoterra and I want to give them a big thank you for sponsoring this video and also just making my dark frog enclosure possible. I've, like I said, really become obsessed with it, so I am very, thankful for this opportunity. So just know that even though this video is sponsored, it is sponsored because I truly, truly, truly have been enjoying these products and have had a lot of success with them. So right in front of me here, we have my poison dart frog enclosure. So this enclosure right here is home to my pair of Dendrobates tinctorius azureus, which I have named Bob and Linda. Now I'm sure as you can tell, there is a lot of condensation on the front window right here. So let's go ahead and open up the enclosure so that we can actually get a better look at what's going on inside. So this enclosure right here is the 18 by 18 by 18 dart frog enclosure by Exoterra, which is a part of their Frogs & Co product line. This enclosure has been absolutely fantastic for both my frogs and all of the plants in here. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at everything. So I want to go ahead and give you guys a little tour of this tank and then after we've done the tour I want to talk about each plant individually and talk about how I've had so much success with my plants in this enclosure. Alright so let's go ahead and take a tour of this dart frog enclosure. So as I'm sure many of you probably remember if you watched any of my other dart frog series videos you guys will remember that this enclosure here has a completely custom background that I 
entirely built myself. So I made the background out of spray foam and dry lock and I also put a few wood pieces in place. So as you can see, there is this uh, big piece of wood here that's stuck in the background and then there is another one over here that's kind of been fully taken over by plants so you can't see it very well but, but that's okay. I really, really, really love how so many of the plants have been using the background as an area to grow on. That is exactly what I was hoping would happen so it makes me very, very happy to see. Honestly, this is kind of funny to say but it makes me happy to see that you can't really see the background anymore. You mostly just see the plants growing on it so that is super, super awesome to me. Linda, where are you going? Excuse me, please don't jump out of your enclosure. That would not be good. Let's, let's, uh, let's move back in there a little bit. So the background here does also have a few mushroom ledges that are foamed into place. You can see one of them there. And below the piece of wood right here, I have this Exoterra coconut hut. So this here is not a real coconut shell. It is fake, but it does look super realistic. And this just gives my dart frogs a place to hide, but it also gives them a place to lay their eggs. Now, sometimes my dart frogs have laid their eggs on various leaves throughout the enclosure but they've also used this coconut hide here like three different times to lay their eggs so that is pretty cool and Linda why do you keep wanting to jump out of the enclosure please you are making me nervous Please do not do that. So moving on from the background, this is the rest of the enclosure here. So obviously I have a layer of substrate with a big layer of leaf litter over it, but again, you can't really see that either anymore because the plants have just completely taken over. So there are a ton of plants here covering the ground and growing just in this surface here. So now that we've taken a quick little look at the tank, let's go ahead and take a closer look at each of the plants and talk about them a little bit more. Okay, so the first plan I wanna show you guys and talk about is definitely one of my personal favorites in this enclosure, although to be completely honest, I have a lot of favorites in this enclosure. But with that said, to get started, let's talk about this gorgeous black velvet alocasia right here. So when I first planted this alocasia into my dart frog enclosure, it was pretty much just a bulb with one teeny tiny little leaf at the the time. It was hardly a plant at all. And now over the past few months, this alocasia has grown so much and it has become such a beautiful plant. Looking at it from this angle, you can see two leaves really clearly, but there is a third leaf right back there. And there is also a fourth leaf that's growing under the plant. So this one is doing quite well. As you can see, the leaves on this have grown really big and just absolutely beautiful. The conditions in this terrarium are just like absolutely perfect for alocasia. So this alocasia here has been just absolutely thriving. Honestly, if we take a look at the black velvet alocasia that's growing in my tank versus the one that is growing outside of the tank, you can honestly see a big difference between the um, like leaf shape and the leaf texture. And that is mostly just because the one in the tank is growing in slightly better conditions than this one here is. So moving on from the alocasia, let's go ahead and talk about one of the other plants that I am absolutely obsessed with in this enclosure, and that would be my Monstera dubia. Now, if you remember, when I first put this plant in here, I was very unsure about it, and I did not have very high hopes for it. It was in here for months and months and months, and it was just not growing at all. It was not thriving the best, but one day I noticed it had finally put out a new leaf, which is this little tiny one at the top here and ever since then the growth on it has just absolutely exploded this plant is growing so fast I swear it is putting out a new leaf every single week at this point it is going to be due for a trim soon because it's about to reach the top of the tank so uh yeah I am absolutely obsessed with this monstera dubia here and I'm so 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 happy that after months and months of no growth it finally decided that it it was just going to explode 
code in here. So then if we take a look right next to the Monstera Dubia, you can see this beautiful angel wing begonia right here. This begonia is just absolutely thriving in this enclosure here. It grows so, so, so fast. I pretty much have to cut this one back every single month because again, it just, it reaches the top of the enclosure so fast. If I wasn't cutting it, it would just like, I don't really know what would happen. It would just be way too big. So I chop this one back basically every single month and then it regrows every single month. So I love this plant. I love how well it's doing. I love how fast it's growing. And I also just love how it looks. I am a huge fan of plants that have silver on their leaves. So I'm a big fan of this angel wing begonia and also the monstera dubia for that reason. I love the silver. Literally the entire time I've been sitting here filming, Linda is just waiting at the very front of the enclosure. She looks like she's gonna jump out, but I know she's not. I think she's just waiting for food or something. I don't know. Are you hungry, Linda? Are you hungry? What are you waiting for? What you waiting for? So the next plant I want to talk about is one that is kind of growing all throughout the enclosure. You can see a bunch of it in this back corner here, but we also have some more of it in this corner and just, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of all throughout the tank and that would be the Philodendron Mykins. So once again, I am just absolutely obsessed with this plant. I love how the leaves look. I love the slight like red tint that the leaves have to them. I think it adds a lot of color and just variety to the enclosure. So I absolutely love that. And I love how this plant is growing in this terrarium. When I first added the Philodendron Mykins to this enclosure, it was literally just like one teeny tiny cutting in that back corner there underneath the piece of wood. So when this enclosure was first set up for the first couple months you could not see the philodendron at all pretty much all of the philodendron leaves were just completely hidden behind this wood and stuff but thankfully it has now grown enough to the point where you can see a lot of the philodendron growing out over here and you can see a bunch more growing over here the philodendron has really 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 taken advantage of the background and has really used the background to grow up which is awesome Philod Dendrons, when they grow up a surface like that, their leaves get really big and beautiful. So I'm very happy that the philodendron is taking advantage of the background the same way that like the Monstera dubia is. That's super awesome. And it makes me very, very happy to see. So this bromeliad that I planted in the background is just absolutely thriving. And I think it's doing a little bit too well because as you can see, it is like completely touching the top of the tank and there's not really really anything I can do about it. I've tried like angling the plant better so that it's not just touching the top, but no matter what I do, it just, it just keeps touching the top. So I'm honestly just going to leave it there and I'll trim the leaves if I have to, but I probably should have put this plant a little bit lower down to begin with because yeah, it's just so close to the top right there that it's pretty much inevitable that it's going to be touching the top. So probably should have put the bromeliad down here or something, but you know what? It's, it's fine. It can stay there for now. I have thought about moving it, but this bromeliad has grown such an intense root system. Literally all of those right there are just roots from the bromeliad. You can see them all underneath there. So this bromeliad has really secured itself in place. So I'm just going to leave it there and hope that everything is fine. But there's my bromeliad. It's doing really well. And I think I would really like to add some more bromeliads to this tank. I think that some bromeliads would help fill out the space a bit more and I think that they would just look really nice So that's definitely something I might do in the future So now that we've taken a look at a lot of the individual plants like the alocasia and the monstera and the angel wing Let's go ahead and take a look at the plants that have just completely taken over the enclosure here so if you just take a look around this enclosure, you can see that there are two plants that have really just absolutely grown everywhere in the enclosure. And now those two plants would be the Begonia Thelmae here and the Pilia Depressa that is just all over the ground. So this gorgeous plant right here is what you would call a Begonia Thelmae and 
Holy crap, this plant grows so, 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 so fast. I mean, you can see just looking around the dart frog enclosure how much is in here. And now keep in mind that this started out as literally two cuttings with like six leaves on them. Like it started out as hardly anything and it has just completely taken over the tank. And now this isn't even just how much it's grown in the past few months because I have taken cuttings from these plants like four different times. I pretty much have to come in here like once a month and cut back all of the begonias or else they would just fully fill out the tank. So I am constantly trimming back these begonias because they grow so, so, so fast. But I honestly really like them. I think that it looks really good in the enclosure. Honestly, I feel like some people would consider this plant to almost be a bit of a weed with how fast it grows, but I really do like it. I like how fast it grows. I like how fast it fills in the space. Um, even when I trim it back, it's like filled back in in just a few weeks. So. so yeah, the begonia definitely requires a lot of like maintenance and stuff, but I don't know. I like it. I like doing the maintenance, so I don't mind having to come in here and take cuttings frequently. I kind of like it. So yeah, obviously the begonia has just taken over this tank, but so has the Pilia depressa. The Pilia depressa is growing everywhere. As you can see, it has obviously taken over like all of the ground. It is basically just like grass in this tank at this point. But not only is it growing on the ground, it has also started to grow up on the walls and things. If we look way up here, you can see a vine of it in the back just growing over the background. And again, you can see some more of it climbing up this piece of wood right here. So I have a feeling that it won't be long before this tank is just completely covered in the Pilia depressa. But honestly, I'm excited for that. I love the Pilia depressa. I think it's gorgeous. I love its tiny leaves. It adds a lot of size variation to the plant, so I'm a big fan. And now the last plant that I wanted to talk to you about is just the moss that I have in this tank because this tank does have quite a bit of moss growing throughout it. It is kind of hard to see because it really does just blend in with all of the other plants, but there is a lot of moss in here and the moss has been doing quite well, so yeah. So there you go. There is a full look at my dart frog enclosure and all of the plants that are currently living inside of it. So now that we've taken a look at all the plants and talked about them a bit, let's go ahead and talk about how I've managed to have so much success with my plants and this enclosure. Oh, I also forgot to mention that I also have this little plant growing right here. I honestly have no idea what it is. It's it's just growing there and uh, yeah, so there's, there's mystery plant. So as you all know, I partnered with my friends at Exo Terra to help make this enclosure build possible. To set up this enclosure here, I used a bunch of different products from their Frogs & Co line. And to be completely honest, I attribute a lot of my success to these products that I've been using. And now you can be certain that I'm not just saying this because I'm working with Exoterra because the proof is right in front of us here. I am in love with this enclosure and it has just done so well over the past few months that I've had it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the lighting that I am using for my plants because one of the most important parts of having a successful terrarium with successful plants plant growth is having good lighting. So both the light in the front and the back are the Exoterra Terra Sky LED plant lights. I've been using these two lights on this enclosure since it was very first set up back in September. And over the past few months of using them, I can say that they have definitely proven to be quite successful. The Terra Sky is a great beginner level plant light that has worked successfully for me on multiple different plant species. A lot of the plants that I keep in this enclosure do appreciate having pretty bright light. So like I said, I do run two LED lights on here and I do run them both at full power. But depending on what kind of plants you're keeping and what their needs are, you can also adjust these lights quite a lot. So the Terra Sky lights come with this remote here, which allows you to change the settings to all sorts of different things. So for example, if I didn't want the light as bright, I can just use this remote here to dim it a little bit. 
or I can revert it back to its full brightness. I can also change the color of the lights. And there's even a setting on here that mimics a thunder shower. So while I don't often use many features like the thunder shower feature or the colored light feature, it is really cool to have them because I'm sure that those features are definitely useful and desirable for many people out there. But even with those features set aside, I am a really big fan of these lights because like I said, they have just been working so well for me. My plants have been doing so well. The growth has been phenomenal. They light up my tank beautifully and I really don't have any complaints complaints at all with them. There's not really anything bad I can say, honestly. I mean, how could I really have any complaints when the plants in my tank are doing this well? I mean, the proof is right there. So if you're someone who is looking into setting up a terrarium and you're looking at different plant lights, I can confidently say that the Exoterra Terra Skylight is a good option. I have had a lot of success and a lot of plant growth using it, so I'm sure that you will as well. And now, as much as the Terra Skylight has helped my plants grow nice and beautiful, we certainly can't give it all of the credit. Another really important factor in having your plants grow nice nice and big and beautiful is having a good quality substrate. So at this point, it is pretty difficult to see the substrate in this enclosure as it has now been buried under a layer of leaf litter, which has also been buried under a layer of plants. So the substrate that I used in this enclosure was actually a very simple mixture. It was essentially just some organic topsoil, which I mixed with a bit of exoteric coconut husk, exoterra forest moss, some leaf litter, and also exoterra substratum. So the exoterra substratum is a bioactive volcanic substrate, and as you can see, it was meant for bioactive enclosures. Now, one of my absolute favorite things about this substrate is the fact that it is so good for plant growth. So when I was making my substrate mixture, I mixed in a lot of this with the soil. So as I mentioned, the substrate in this enclosure was a mixture made up of soil, cocoa husk, moss, and the substratum. And now I have made this same mixture with and without the substratum and the difference between the two of them is crazy. Whenever the substratum is added into the mix, the plant growth is so much better than the mixture without it. Ever since I first used the Exoterra substratum substrate, I have now started adding it into basically every single substrate mix that I make. And I even use it with just like my house plants and stuff. Every single plant I have is planted in this stuff. I am not lying when I say that this stuff works so, so, so well for plants. In fact, I know a lot of people actually just use this substrate on its own and don't bother mixing it in with anything. So, so the fact that you can use this substrate all on its own and still have really good plant growth speaks for how good this substrate is. If you are setting up some sort of terrarium or bioactive enclosure or anything like that, I would definitely recommend considering substratum as a substrate option or considering adding it into your substrate mixture. So the substratum substrate provides a lot of fertilizer for the plants in this enclosure, which is what helps them grow so big. But of course, they're also getting naturally fertilized by the decaying leaf litter, by the frogs poop, and all sorts of things like that. So obviously, more goes into caring for plants than just having a light and substrate. Obviously, it's a bit more complicated than that, but for the most part, the light and your substrate are going to be two of the most important things, so those were really the main things that I wanted to touch on today. In addition to the substrate and the lighting that I'm using, I also think that the enclosure itself plays a big role in the success that I've had, as this enclosure holds in a lot of humidity and it has really Really good drainage so that has also certainly contributed to the success I've had with these plants and there we go there is my poison dart frog enclosure four or five months in something like that I have 
probably already said this like 30 times throughout this in video, but I am just so obsessed with my dart frogs and their enclosure. I have been having such an incredible time caring for them, watching the enclosure grow in, taking care of the frogs, caring for the plants, all that fun stuff. I'm obsessed and I will certainly be getting more dart frogs in the future and I will certainly be setting up more dart frog vivariums because like I said, I'm obsessed. I, I don't know what else to tell you. So with all of that said and done, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Once again, I wanna say a big thank you to Exoterra for sponsoring this video and making my dart frog enclosure possible. I truly appreciate it. If any of you watching right now are looking into setting up your own terrarium, I would highly, highly, highly recommend checking out the Exoterra Frogs & Co product line. I have had so much success using these products. I highly recommend them to anyone out there who is looking into setting up a terrarium. I really think a lot of these products will help you set up a successful enclosure. I mean, they've really done that for me, so I'm sure they'll do the same for you. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out and it costs you nothing, so please be sure to do that. And also be sure to subscribe to my channel for some more awesome animal content just like this. Also be sure to check out my social media. Everything will be down in the description below and I would love to have you guys over there. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all that fun stuff. And the last thing I wanna promote is the fact that I have a merch store now. This shirt that you see right here is one of my merchandise shirts. This is Sage the Cat Gecko shirt. But I also have a bunch of other designs. There is over 100 products on my Teespring store, so I can guarantee there's gonna be something on there that you would like. So if you wanna help support me and my channel, please consider checking out my Teespring store. I would really, really appreciate that. Of course, the link will be in the description down below. Speaking of links in the description down below, you can also also find the link to the Exoterra Frogs & Co website. Again, if you're looking at setting up a terrarium, I highly recommend checking it out. Thank you all so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in my next video.